Hi, in this video, we'll talk about the things that you need to look for or look out for when you're looking at data in terms of communication or for communication. So the first thing which is extremely important and um, is that data does not create meaning, people do. And this is basically at the heart of uh, any communication uh, plan that you would have. Uh, and you have to be aware of it. Uh, so it works both ways. Uh, first is uh, the sources from which you are uh, getting your data. You have to be aware of the biases. Uh, you have to be aware of uh, the problems that are there inherently. Uh, also about the positives uh, that go along with it. And uh, in the same breath, uh, you have to also communicate these uh, biases to your uh, readers or to your uh, stakeholders. So uh, whenever you're dealing with data, and this is where uh, I'll again revisit the flowchart uh, a little bit. So logically what happens with flowchart is that uh, there'll be uh, one uh, or two primary sources of data that you'll be working with, uh, or for any communication, there'll be one or two primary sources of information or data sets or headline figures that we call uh, in journalism parlance uh, that you'll be uh, leading with so basically they will allow you to garner the maximum support or uh, maximum uh, visits so you have to be extremely cautious about uh, the data sets uh, why was the data created and how reliable it is so uh, if you want to make an exaggerated or if you want to make a headline uh, impact then it is at times much better uh, to lead with numbers uh, that are given by the government. So one classic example is uh, when we started uh, working on state of India's environment and figures, uh, we were very clear uh, right from the outset that if we are trying to see India's progress, which would invariably end up also uh, looking at how the government has performed, uh, it makes much more sense to rely on government data and analyze government data. So to look at the positives and the negatives uh, in different environmental and different uh, sectors. So you have to be very clear about the government sources. So there have been times when uh, there are more relevant or more uh, recent surveys done by other organizations on uh, a particular uh, topic. Uh, but we still go with the government data primarily because uh, we are talking about government and its performance in one way or the other. So you have to look at it. Uh, you have to be very careful about the source, uh, especially in today's Asian time uh, and especially with the onset of uh, the social media and WhatsApp and Twitter and the fake news uh, thing that is going around. So you have to be very careful about how you, because um, especially when you're talking about communication, uh, every communication expert would tell you that it takes a lot of small efforts to build a brand or get audiences. And one small wrong move, one typo here or there, or one number that is unverified and is controversial uh, might lead to the downfall or might undo the entire process. And this is even more true when you're dealing with data because it's basically one number gone here or there. Uh, and one nice way of going about it, and this is something that we are very careful of, uh, how was it created, the sample size and the duration for the uh, data source, uh, duration for the, uh, the period that was uh, that went behind uh, getting the data. So um, this is one of the primary reasons why uh, whenever we at Down to Earth uh, or in CSE uh, look at uh, communication or look at any 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 uh, idea, so we we give the idea the most importance uh, as and not the data. Uh, the basic idea is exactly the same. Uh, so if if your message is being uh, told through, let's say, a piece of information that the government has come out with, even if the data is slightly uh, dated, uh, you are good with it. 
Uh, one classic example is, and this is something that I was able to see this time around. So when we were working on this year's uh, SOA in figures, um, it was uh, it usually comes in uh, July, July fifth. Uh, so uh, at that point in time, COVID, uh, so the uh, migration was at its peak. People were literally walking back home, and uh, we were trying to gauge the migration trend, the reverse migration trend. And uh, there were a few NGOs which were working on grassroots level and they were generating some numbers. Uh, that was just about the time when uh, the Shramik train uh, had started and the government was giving out half-baked, uh, very cryptic kind of messages on how brilliantly they are working to the extent that they, they would mention the number of trains that were flying initially, but they would not tell the number of people who were being taken back home so that there uh, so that uh, no questions can be asked in terms of how much reverse migration was happening so at that point in time uh, we relied on uh, census 2011 data where uh, they talk about migration and how many people have actually migrated from their hometowns and villages and rural areas to urban areas and the broad trend that w had emerged in that 2011 uh, Many months later, when uh, the reverse migration uh, scenario was pretty clear, we, the predictions that we were able to get from the 2011 data was exactly the same as it was right now. So basically, the people who moved out of their places in 2011 were actually the people who were going back. And it makes sense, even if um, we ask any Indian, we know which are the states from where people have moved to uh, and which are the states where people have actually settled down. So, uh, so the basic idea is the, 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 the obsession or the, 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 the uh, importance or the emphasis on data is primarily to get trends. And the good thing is that trends don't change overnight. So you don't always have to be on the lookout for the most updated piece of information. So trends normally, and especially when you're dealing with uh, a country as big as India, Trends do not change overnight. Uh, so that is another thing that is important. Uh, and there have been times I would also like to give another example over here. So uh, I remember a couple of years back, we were doing a story on uh, when the beef controversy was at, at its peak. Uh, so the story that Down to Earth came out with uh, was uh, that how uh, the existing... Uh, legal framework for uh, meat shops and meat and, and slaughterhouses in, in the country is so stringent that even government slaughterhouses are not applying uh, the guidelines properly. So it is impossible to have a legally correct or a legally abiding uh, slaughterhouse in India. So we obviously went through, the, uh, through what the law says and we had some sampling in terms of uh, some people going and uh, reporting from uh, ground zero. Uh, then we were able to find only one uh, survey that was conducted by an NGO, a very uh, a lesser known NGO. And the sample size was also very low. However, the message that it was giving was exactly what we wanted to say. So. Under normal circumstances, we would not have carried it because it is very difficult to verify the merit of the NGO. Uh, but uh, in this case, because we did not have any other numbers and we did not have any other uh, research to go uh, to fall back on. So we gave that headline figure. However, in the same uh, sentence or in, 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 the, in the following sentence, we made it amply clear that there are some inherent uh, limitations in this research and where we talked about how the sample size is very limited and, and that uh, it is being done by an organization which is not very verifiable. However, we said that the findings are in, in line with what our reporters have got from uh, ground zero. So it isn't that if, if a number is, so, so basically it's coming back to the same thing. So you have to know what your message is and you have to be very careful about the numbers uh, and uh, the source and the, how, how they originate or from where they originate. Uh, so you should interview your numbers the way you would interview a source 
or when you are trying to look at something new. So at least uh, the important pieces of information that you're dealing with. So if you have multiple sources from which you're coming, uh, you, you're building your communication or your article or your uh, report, uh, at least the most important or the highlight figures, you have to be extremely careful about it. Uh, one way of going about is that you get it checked from multiple sources. Uh, if it is a number on how, let's say, uh, the tiger population in India and how it is moving, um, you have to speak to experts to get a good feedback on in terms of uh, the way you head it. Specifically, uh, every time I uh, am analyzing data and I come across something very interesting or something very abnormal, I always make it a point to cross verify it uh, with experts uh, in the field. Uh, so whenever we're thinking about analyzing, uh, analyzing data for communication, uh, we try to put our stories or our, 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 our uh, communication material in uh, broadly three kinds of uh, tr no, trends uh, or the three kinds of uh, stories. So uh, the first one being an outlier story. Uh, so the idea over here is that whenever you are looking at your numbers and whenever you are looking, you are cleaning it up and you're analyzing it, try to think about, uh, your, about putting out your number in this way. So an outlier story is uh, when a value is different from all the others. So which city has the least crime or why do students from the school have uh, such good grades? So rankings is another example of that. Uh, or this was a headline uh, that, that, that came out a couple of years back. That a couple in Gujarat got married in just 500 rupees. So if you look at it, they are basically all of these at the structuring of the story or the product would be exactly the same. The language would be different. So outlier, uh, outlier uh, story or uh, is uh, the uh, first story option. The other is a trend story, basically a pattern, basically all the line graphs and the bar graphs that we come up with. Crime has been decreasing over the last 10 years or has rabies deaths in India increased over the years. Uh, so this is the other one. Uh, and then there are some correlation stories. Um, so uh, the most obvious correlation is that one thing is leading to the other. Uh, so an example of this is X is leading to Y or causing Y is more smoking causes cancer or uh, people buy more umbrellas when it's raining. So this is the most popular kind of correlation that, that exists. Uh, there are many other kinds of correlation like Y is being caused by X, uh, Y causes X or uh, both of them have an impact on each other or uh, an external factor like Z is causing both of them. And finally, the, which is most often the case when there is something alarming is that it is a random chance. So uh, the way I go about is uh, if you are dealing with a subject matter that you work with, there is a very high chance that you would know if it is random or not. And um, when I'm thinking about this, about structuring my, my communication content, I try to put everything in one of these uh, structures. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, so over here, if you look at it, uh, it's a simple uh, graph uh, on, uh, over here, we have the homicide uh, rate per 100,000 people in uh, uh, countries across the world. And over here, it is basically guns per 100 people. Uh, so I'm basically, uh, the, the idea is to show that uh, data does not create meaning people do. So if you look at this number, you basically see that uh, both of them are going up. So basically homicide rate and guns per 100 people is going up. So what kind of stories can you possibly come up with? Um, there are two stories that I could come up with. Um, one is that if you have a gun, you are likely to use it, uh, which is basically places where uh, there is high density of guns. There is high uh, homicide rate. Uh, the same thing can also be using the same piece of information. You can also say that if you are living in a dangerous locality, you will buy a gun. Now, the, the, it, this is where experience come into play. So if you know, you would know if, if it is a, a thing from your uh, field of expertise, which of the two is correct. But 
this piece of data can be used to tell both of these stories. One is that if you uh, have easy access to guns, there would be higher homicide rates. And if you are living in a very uh, dangerous locality, there's a very high likelihood that you would have a gun. There might be other ways of looking at it. I would urge all of you to also think about what are the other ways you can look at the data. The assumption is that we are only looking at this data and we're not adding more data to it. If we do that, then there'll be a lot of other interpretations as well. Uh, this is another example. And uh, at the outset, I will tell you that this is not made up numbers. And there was actually a report that came out where if you look at it, uh, over here is uh, basically Nobel laureates per 10 million population. Uh, so basically the density of uh, Nobel laureates uh, in different countries. And this is the chocolate consumption, uh, per capita chocolate consumption in those countries. So if you look at it, uh, it's the same concept again. Uh, countries which have uh, high chocolate consumption, per capita chocolate consumption, also have produced more Nobel laureates in the past, as opposed to China, uh, Brazil for that matter. So if this was the only piece of information that you had, uh, what are the likely stories that you can possibly come up with? Uh, I'll give you the examples that I could come up with. Uh, one is that chocolates make you smarter. And that is the most obvious X leading to Y kind of scenario. And if I were uh, doing a campaign, a communication campaign for Cadbury, I'm confident my bosses would be extremely happy with this uh, graph. Uh, the other, this is a very NGO kind of, an, uh, kind of a perspective to the entire thing. Uh, is that if you look at the countries, uh, the developed countries are the ones who have uh, a lot of uh, Nobel laureates. And at the same time, chocolate is an expensive commodity and not everybody has access to it. So the higher income or the, the, the development uh, level of the country dic dictates both of these and influences both of these. So basically higher income makes you eat more chocolate or you can afford more chocolate. And at the same time, higher income can fund better education or you have better access to good education. So that leads to uh, this graph or that is the reason why this graph is moving the way it is. Uh, this is another example. Uh, uh, the per capita cheese consumption, uh, the pink line over here is basically the per capita cheese consumption of an area uh, that is going up. Uh, and at the same time, the number of vegetarian people in that area over the years. And if you look at it, more or, more or less, both of them are going up. So the cheese consumption is in pounds, uh, the unit, the weighing unit, and uh, the number of vegetarian population is in million. So there is a, it looks like there is a direct correlation between the two and uh, the, the first time that I thought about it, uh, maybe because of the bias that I am uh, Bengali and I have, I basically have a lot of non-vegetarian food. So the first instance I looked at it, I was like, there can't be any correlation between the two. But I'm confident people who are vegetarians, they might or they might not uh, look a see a trend between the two that people are becoming more vegetarian and cheese is one of the popular vegetarian alternative. Uh, so the consumption of cheese is also going up. Uh, another way of look, another example could be this, uh, the number of drowning cases in, is increasing in town X when the consumption of ice cream is increasing. Um, so stories around it, uh, they, it can also be, uh, that there's a random chance, but I remember in one of the uh, workshops that I, where I had this PPT, one of the participants had said the same thing. Ki, uh, you consume more ice creams during the summer season. You also go closer to the, or you go to water bodies during the summer season. So it is basically the summer season, which is triggering both of them and which makes a lot of sense again. So, uh, this is uh, important that just because there is a correlation does not mean that one is triggering the other and you have to be very careful about it. But in my experience, what I've seen is uh, that we usually have a hunch 
of where we are going off in terms of uh, where we are exaggerating the correlation and where we know it is true. So uh, some of the hard truths about visualization or about communication uh, is, uh, and this is something that we will realize in the final state, but when you're analyzing, this is something that you should try uh, to keep in mind, is that only a small amount of raw data will finally be used for visualization. So don't get fixated or don't fall in love with the raw data and don't try to cram in too much information. Uh, so you have to prioritize your raw data. Uh, the other is that you should always give a context, even if it seems unnecessary, uh, because there'll be a lot of times when it looks extremely unnecessary, but it never is. Uh, so you have to explain things no matter who the target audience is. Uh, the language might differ because of the target audience, but you have to give context to everything. Uh, whenever you are using big numbers, uh, try to give a reference uh, for correlation. Uh, basically, instead of giving, so uh, one way of going about is you explain uh, a tract of land uh, in terms of how many football fields it would be or how many cricket fields it will be. So that basically helps us in visualizing. So that, uh, that is one thing. So, so especially uh, Indians, uh, especially people from developing countries, even in Africa, uh, my experience has been we do not think visually. Uh, one classic example of this is that uh, we, uh, when we talk about, uh, let's say, uh, which box to get or which box to buy from the market or which bucket to buy from the market. We usually refer to within our family, we usually refer to it as please get the big, big basket or the small basket from the market. We don't say so many liters and so many liters. So we, we instinctively do not think about numbers and think and, 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 and are able to visualize it. So it makes sense to, give references for correlation, simpler references for correlation uh, in terms of, let's say, the size of an area vis-a-vis -vis the size of Delhi. So if it is, uh, so if we talk about how much of forest land gets uh, eroded every year in India, and if we are able to say that it is basically the size of Delhi or basically the size of any other state. So that basically gives you an idea of how big the crisis is. Um, the other thing that um, uh, we normally do uh, look at is, so the assumption over here is that uh, a communication plan requires multiple entries into uh, with the same message to have a desired impact. So the first time you tell the story, it might or might not reach uh, to the target audience. Uh, so you have to have multiple entries and revisit the story or revisit the message over and over again. So there are side stories that you can look for. Uh, so money or the scale of operations uh, involved in uh, the main story uh, or how much is the outreach or the impact of it. Uh, code judgments is one place that we look at. So uh, the uh, slaughterhouse story that I was talking about, uh, that was primarily dependent on uh, the legal framework that exists in the country. Um, so laws is the other one. Uh, you can also look at case studies. They make the stories much more humane and they make numbers much more humane. So uh, one uh, uh, pet way of starting stories in down to earth is that we start with a, uh, a case study of an individual, which is something that even most of the uh, human agencies also do in their reports. They have specific case studies for every uh, in, 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 in every report where they basically give you a feel of the place and give you a feel of the, or share the experience of the individuals. So even in down to earth, we do that. So we start with the case study, let's say of a farmer or of a tribal uh, person, the kind of experience they're going through. And then we try to back it up with a big number uh, so that, so the, the, the case study makes it believable and the numbers give you an idea of how big the scale is. Uh, so that is something that you have, you can do. So you should also look at percentages, uh, look at comparable data to see the aberration. So these are the basic 
things that you need to keep in mind when you're thinking of analyzing data, especially for uh, communication, because all the concepts that we've talked about are very, very simple and um, very uh, easily understandable. So that is basically the mantra behind any communication uh, campaign that you can run. Keep it simple, as simple as possible. Uh, final uh, takeaways is that always double check your, your, the final analysis that you've come up with, especially to ensure that no biases have crept in. Uh, this happens and I'm confident I've, I've seen it uh, most uh, pronounced in researchers. So it is absolutely important that you have a final check, especially the numbers on the basis of which you're going ahead with the entire communication campaign. Also try to answer the why of the final analysis. Uh, so uh, this is uh, one thing that happened. So uh, this is something that even I struggled with in uh, the initial days when I started writing with numbers. So I was so excited about numbers and the fact that I could actually look at so much numbers, so many numbers, um, that I started doing stories only in terms of numbers. So if a new report would come, so this is what is happening at the India level and this is what is happening at different county or state level or different district level. So my final story would be basically uh, a lot of numbers with, sub, with some sentences or words sprinkled around it. And uh, now when I look back and I try to read them, I realize how difficult it becomes. So if only I would have asked the why in this final analysis, that is where uh, subject matter experts come into play, then it actually would mean uh, be of some utility to the end user. So they would understand what is happening and how it is, how it would relate to them in a way if, if it does. So that is another thing that you have to be very careful about or you should always try to answer. Uh, because people are interested in it. 